In this module, we will discuss about the WTO provisions on preferential treatment to developing countries. The WTO agreements include special provisions which give developing countries special rights to be treated more favorably than other WTO members. These provisions provide the developing countries the preferential treatment in implementing the provisions, agreements or commitment or measures to enhance trading opportunities. These provisions are also termed as special and differential treatment provisions. It includes the following measures. First, provisions granting longer transitional periods extra time to fulfill their commitments. Second, provisions aiming to augment trading opportunities through greater market access. Third, provisions allowing flexibility of commitments of action and use of policy instruments. Fourth, provisions which require WTO members to safeguard the interests of developing country members when adopting protective trade measures domestically or internationally. Fifth, provisions of providing technical assistance in the implementation of various agreements, provisions, commitments to carry out WTO work, handle dispute and implement technical standards, and sixth, provisions related to least developed countries, LDC. The preamble of the agreement establishing the WTO states that there is a need for positive efforts designed to ensure that developing countries, especially the least developed countries, secure a share in the growth of international trade commensurate with the needs of their economic development. In the Doha declaration, the member countries concurred that all the preferential treatments to developing countries are the integral part of WTO agreements and these provision needs to be reviewed with the object of strengthening them and making them more effective and operational. The declaration directed the Committee on Trade and Development to extract the provisions that are mandatory in nature and also asked to think about the legal and practical implication of making those provisions mandatory which are currently non-binding. The committee was also given the responsibility to consider those parameters in which the developing countries, especially least developed countries, may be assisted to make best use of special treatment. After reading this module, you will be able to know the provisions related with preferential treatment to developing countries, understand the provisions of preferential treatment under GAT, GATS, TRIPS and TRIMS. We shall now understand the important provisions on preferential treatment. General Agreement on Tariff and Trade GATT goods in order to give differential and more favorable treatment to developing countries, the enabling clause was adopted under GATT in 1979 with respect to tariff in context of the generalized system of preferences. In particular, the paragraph 2 subsection C of GATT 1979 permits preferential treatment among developing countries in goods in trade. The enabling clause is also known as the decision on differential and more favorable treatment, reciprocity and fuller participation of developing countries. The negotiations within the framework of multilateral trade negotiations, the member countries decided as follows. First, preferential tariff treatment agreement by developed countries to products originating in developing countries in accordance with the generalized system of preferences that exempts WTO member countries from most favored nation for the purpose of reducing tariff for the LDCs without reducing tariffs for developed countries. Second, differential and more favorable treatment relating to non-tariff measures administered by the provisions of instruments multilaterally negotiated under the GATT. Third, elimination or reduction of tariffs mutually amongst less developed countries on products imported from each other under the regional or global trade arrangements. Fourth, 
any special treatment in the context of any general or specific measures in favor of developing countries. It is required that any contracting member countries that takes action to reduce, modify or withdraw of the differential or more favorable treatment so provided shall notify the contracting parties with all information pertaining to such action. The contracting parties may consult all contracting parties concerned with such matter to reach the solution satisfactory to all the contracting parties. The enabling clause specifies that developed countries do not seek from developing countries in the course of trade negotiations to have any offer contribution that are inconsistent with their individual development, financial and trade needs. In the case of economic difficulties, the developed countries shall implement utmost restraint in extracting any concession or benefits for commitment made by them to reduce or remove trade barriers and also the least developed countries are not expected to make such concessions to the developed countries that are contraventions to the provisions of the agreements. It has also been projected that such measures would improve the development of such economies and improvement in their trade situations and the developing economies, especially least developed countries will look forward to participate fully under the framework of the general agreement. Also, the rights conferred on developing countries are first, the GATT Article 18 regarding non-discriminatory administration of quantitative restrictions specifying no restriction shall be applied on the importation of goods by the contracting country, on any third country or on exportation of any product designed for the territory for the any other third party unless such restriction or prohibition of importation, exportation of the like product to all third countries on similar prohibition or restriction. The contracted countries can apply import restriction for the safeguard purposes. In applying import restrictions to any product, the following provisions are to be followed. First, import quotas representing total amount of imports permitted to the allocated supplying countries even for known allocated countries shall be fixed. Second. Where the import quotas cannot be made applicable, the restrictions may be imposed through the means of granting import licenses with wider publicity. Third, where the import quotas are allocated to the supplying countries, applying the restriction may seek agreement with respect to allocation of share in the quota with the other contracting countries having a substantial interest in supplying the product. Second. Decision on safeguard action for development purposes. The contracting parties may review or recognize that the carrying the policies and programs of economic development by the less developed countries may involve the system of establishment or maintenance of particular industry. Development of new or modified or extended structure of the product for the optimum utilization of resources for the economic development. Third, declaration of trade measures taken for balance of payments purposes. It reiterates that restrictive import measure adopted for balance of payment purpose should not be adopted for the motive of protecting a specific industry or sector. The declaration emphasizes that in order to implement restrictive import measure for the purpose of balance of payment, the less developed countries must take into their consideration their individual development, financial and trade situation. It recognized that the developed countries should avoid implementation of restrictive trade measures for the purpose of balance of payment to their maximum possible extent. The declaration took into consideration the serious impact of such restrictive trade measures and made the provision of consultation where all restrictive trade measures taken for the purpose of balance of payment shall be subject to the consultation with GATT Committee on Balance of Payment Restrictions. Fourth, Article 36th of Part 4th 
of the GATT of Trade and Development describes the principles and objectives for the upliftment of developing countries and observed to raise the standard of living and progressive development of economies, especially less developed countries. Their rapid expansion depends on diversification of the structure of their economies and less dependence on exports of primary products. It can be attainable only with the commitments of the developed countries to refrain from introducing or increasing customs duty or non-tariff import barriers or products that are substantially export interest of less developed economies. It also include the provision of non-reciprocity preferential treatment for developing countries that is the developing countries are not required to make matching offer in return when developed countries grant trade concessions. Next is General Agreement on Trade in Services GATS. It recognizes the rights of the members to regulate and introduce new regulations on the supply of services at national level in accordance with national policies and given asymmetries existing with regulation in different countries with respect to services particularly need of developing countries to exercise this right. Services include any service in any sector except services supplied in use with government authorities not available for commercial basis or competition with one or more service suppliers. The GATS agreement has two broad requirements that is non-discrimination on the basis of most favored nations and transparency. Article 4 of the GATS describes the provision for increasing participation of developing countries to be assisted through strengthening their domestic service capacity, its efficiency and competitiveness. The developed countries shall ascertain contact points within two years from the date of entry of WTO agreement to assist developing country service suppliers about the information of registration obtaining professional qualifications, availability of service technology, commercial and technical aspects of supply of services. The member countries are required to make binding commitments in terms of market access and national treatment. It has been left to the member country to make a decision how far it desires to go on specific commitment. Article 12 permits the developing countries and the countries in transition to restrict trade and services for the reasons of balance of payment difficulties. Next is agreement of trade related aspects of intellectual property rights trips. It is an agreement where the owner claims payments or rent from the user of the property. The WTO agreement lays down the minimum standards for various the intellectual properties to be applied to the member countries. The agreement of TRIPS outlines the standard for all areas of intellectual property including copyrights and related rights, trademarks, geographical indications, industrial designs, patents, layout designs of integrated circuits, protection of undisclosed information and control of anti-competitive practices in contractual licenses. The objective of the agreement is to protect and enforce the intellectual property right to contribute towards the technological innovation and disseminate such technologies to the user by the producer for the mutual advantage in a manner conducive to social and economic welfare of the member countries. The agreement gives the right to members to formulate or amend their laws and regulations to protect public health and nutrition and other policies for the public interest in sector significant for the economic development of the economies provided they are consistent with the agreement. It specifies that appropriate measures are required to be initiated to prevent the abuse of intellectual property rights by right holders or to locate the practices which unreasonably affect the international technology transfer provided they are consistent with the agreement. The computer programs, compilation of data or other material whether in machine 
readable or other form where intellectual creation exists shall be protected that not only confined to protect the material but also any copyright subsisting in the data or material itself. The commitments under TRIPS apply equally to all member countries. However, developing countries were allowed extra period to implement such changes, modifications applicable to their domestic laws in two tiers of transition depending upon their level of development to ensure the effective enforcement of IPRs. Initially, the developing countries, most of which are the net users of intellectual property, oppose the inclusion of property rights under the agreement, whereas developed countries whose organizations are dominant in the owners of the intellectual property, supported the inclusion of intellectual property in WTO agreement. The contention behind the argument of developing countries was that it will lead to increase in prices of patentable products such as pharmaceuticals and agriculture inputs. Article 67 of the TRIPS agreement provides the provision of technical assistance on request to the developing countries to incorporate trade related intellectual property rights. Next is trade related investment measures. Normally, the government initiate two measures to attract foreign direct investment, viz. performance initiatives and investment initiatives. Performance initiatives are meant to ensure that foreign investment are leading to the economic growth of the country and the investment initiatives inculcates the tools related to monetary and fiscal policy of the country. The initiatives related with the trade in goods are termed as trade related investment measures. These measures are significant for the developing countries as the aim of these measures to achieve economic development, industrialization and technology transfers and also guard against the anti-competitive practices for the achievement of the goals. The WTO members recognize that certain investment measures may have trade restrictive and distorting effects. It agreed that no member shall apply such measures that are prohibited by the provisions of GATT Article 3rd and Article 9th dealing with national treatment and quantitative restrictions respectively. During transition period, the developed countries were expected to eliminate the inconsistent measures with two years while developing countries were required to eliminate such measures within five years and least developed countries in seven years. The developing countries have put forward a number of reasons in favor of trade related investment measures as these ensure the contribution to their economic development by boosting the small industries, generating employment and value added. However, implementation of the TRIMS agreement has been observed as the serious challenge for the developing countries. Following are the examples of TRIMS explicitly prohibited by the TRIMS agreement. A. Local content requirement. It includes the agreements related to the particular products or volume or value or proportion of such volume or value of product of domestic origin must be purchased or used by an enterprises. B. Trade balancing requirement. It includes the measures requiring that the purchase of enterprises or use of imported products to be restricted to an amount associated to volume or value of domestic products that it exports. C. Foreign exchange restrictions. Any measure which restriction where restriction is imposed on the imports of products used in or associated with its domestic production by restraining its access to foreign exchange attributable to the enterprise. D. Export restrictions. Domestic sales requirements where restrictions are imposed on exporting the goods or the volume or value of products or the proportion of its domestic production by an enterprise. Thus, many agreements of WTO provide for technical assistance to developing countries for the effective enforcement of the provisions of the agreements. 
by considering the variability in implementation of such provisions members agreed to provide the relaxations in implementing such measures provisions with certain extensions required let us now recapitulate what we study so far the wto agreements include special provisions which give developing countries special rights to be treated more favorably than other wto members these provisions provide the developing countries the preferential treatment in implementing the provisions agreements or commitments or measures to enhance trading opportunities the preamble of the agreement establishing the wto states that there is a need for positive efforts designed to ensure that developing countries especially the least developed countries secure a share in the growth of international trade commensurate with the needs of their economic development the gat article 18 regarding non discriminatory administration of quantitative restrictions specifying no restriction shall be applied on the importation of goods by the contracting country on any third product destined for the territory for the any other third party unless such restriction or prohibition of importation exportation of the like product to all third countries on similar prohibition or restriction the initiatives related with the trade in goods are termed as trade related investment measures these measures are significant for the developing countries as the aim of these measures to achieve economic development industrialization and technology transfers and also guard against the anti competitive practices for the achievements of the goals thank you